Good morning. Ryan from Vol Ventures again. Glad to be here. Sun came out, so it's time to work on other projects. Today's project though, with nice weather, I gotta work on the dump truck. It's a, uh, you can see the, the bed over my shoulder. It's a 1969 Chevrolet. A lot of people call it a C60. I think that technically it's an M60. It is a tandem axle, dual 30,000 pound axles, full air brake. It has a 427 big block Chevrolet gas engine in it. I've converted it to fuel injection. I can give a tour of that, probably will. It was, I'm kind of proud of it, it was fun. And today I'm swapping the fuel tank. The person that had it before me put a 10 gallon plastic fuel tank from a hot sea, uh, high, high temperature, hot water, steam, pressure washer, whatever you want to call it. And in the off time, I took two propane bottles, cut them apart, made some baffles, and made myself a 15 gallon fuel tank for it. Primary reason was the other fuel tank was starving when the truck was climbing hills because the fuel outlet was towards the front at the bottom. No baffling, no clunk, no nothing. I had some leftover scrap pieces laying around, so I turned them into a fuel tank, tossed them into baggage. That was fun, 48.5 pounds on the scale. Brought them up and now it's time to install it. All right, first thing to do, figure out where I'm gonna put the bolts. Preferably somewhere where I can access them. But the holes line up, which tells me that this is going to work. I don't know how, but it is. Later on, I'll put these feet in, but it's a solid plate under here, so with it bolted to the back, it's fine. Later on, I can get some 2 inch by 3 inch angle iron, extend these out, bolt these down, weld them in, make it look a little less scary. But for now, I just need to get this in, hooked up, and then we get the fun part of a joyride. We've moved from the fabrication area. Now we're in the paint area. And as luck would have it, I forgot to clean up the grind, do the grinding and finishing in the fabrication area. So we're going to do it here. Knock the sand off the stripper wheel. These strippers are nice. Stripper discs. Get your mind out of the gutter. I think I need to make another chalk. Round objects on flat rims. I think it was Murphy that pretty much promised that whatever I'm doing isn't going to work right, and if I'm trying to paint something, it's going to end up in the sand. All right, did a good chalk. So I have a very technical, very technical method for making chalks. Put on the gloves, of course, because safety first, maybe third, fourth, somewhere in there. Take an old burned up foam can, because they're just an awful lot of fun to put in a burn barrel. Ah, one, one more. Congratulations, we have a chalk. 
Now my paint project won't end up in the gravel and sand. Hopefully. No promises. My chalks aren't working perfectly. Now I learned this trick a long time ago from a very very good friend of mine who may or may not see this video, I hope he does, that if you can't afford something aluminum but you want it to look aluminum, magic paint. This is the Rust-Oleum High Gloss 15 minutes fast dry so that means the weather will change in 10 but this is high gloss aluminum paint and it is amazing. I learned this trick when he would paint cast iron cylinder heads after doing just a marvelous job of porting. He'd paint them and at first glance he couldn't tell. A friend of mine actually asked me if this was an aluminum tank. I think he needs glasses, but it's not. The reason I want this is because it's a reflective paint. It's a light color, so if for some reason the truck is sitting in the sun, I don't have a dark color or black or blue or red or any other color sitting there with the sun beating on it, heating the fuel tank up. And not necessarily because I'm scared of any pressure or explosion, but mostly because I don't want hot fuel. The more your fuel warms up, the more power you lose, and that big block Chevrolet in that truck needs all the help it can get. of going from our paint shop back to our fabrication shop for installation the battery was low enough on both the camera and my phone to control the camera then I couldn't continue on so I threw everything on the chargers and proceeded off to other projects basically rewiring a mistake I made when I did the fuel injection conversion I'll give you guys a tour of that later but I had the tank installed, figured he didn't really care and want to watch me roll around in the ground even though I cheated and put down a piece of pink foam. The tank's bolted down, two bolts are fine, I'll have four later. So we're going to hook things up, mm -hmm. where did I put it? Oh, we're going to hook things up, seal them up, and with any luck at all I'll be able to turn the key and nothing exciting happens. We don't want exciting. We're in the middle of a forest with lots of white spruce. If things get too exciting, the neighbors could be very, very upset if all of a sudden there's a raging forest fire. So we're, we're trying to avoid that. I like my neighbors. I think they pretend to like me. It's all good. We help each other. That's the important part and enjoy each other's company.
We're going to get some fuel, pour some in, and see if this thing will fire up. Fuel is expensive enough nowadays that I might only put five gallons in. I wish I had a way to take it back out. Good video right here, right? Right here. This is it. Money going down in the funnel. Doesn't even smell good. I don't know if the truck could appreciate race fuel. Probably not. I'm pretty sure they're actually pretty low compression. I should look it up someday. I have had temptation to play around with building a single or twin turbo setup for it. Just because it'd be fun. Nothing to do with any kind of practicality or just necessity. I just think it'd be fun. Or a supercharger. I, I'm, I'm partial to Paxton's. An OV2000, an OV2000 would be fun, but with the big air compressor on the front of this, it makes it awkward. This is where I'd probably light a lighter or a match and look down inside and things go exploding, but I'm crazy, not stupid. So I'm going to go find my flashlight. Five gallons brought it just over the baffles. Dip tubes are perfect. I don't see signs of leaks. That's always a good thing. Inside's not rusty. This gas cap is vented, so I didn't have to have a second rollover vent or anything because I'm pretty sure that this truck won't be doing any racing, or at least sanctioned racing. So I guess all we can do is make sure that nothing catastrophic is going to happen before I do it. Turn the key and hope for the best. Okay, now for the moment of truth. This is just easier to do holding the iPhone, so it's going to be shaky, it's going to be low quality. Probably want to aim at the wrong things. There's a nice stable running board. The seats are loose, but that just gives them a more of a suspended feel. Oh, that was a weird noise. Oh, all right, those are air brakes. See, told you I didn't know what I'm doing. Anyway, there it is, your classic C-Series, old, late 60s, early 70s C-Series dash. Moment of truth. There's the easy EFI control panel. Now in full disclosure, I cheated. I went ahead and primed it. Took a while because, you know, I didn't actually follow the instructions. The fuel pump is higher than it should be. It's at basically the same level as the top of the tank instead of down below the tank. So it took a little longer to prime, but that's all right. Here we go. Probably one of the best sounding big block Chevys I've ever heard. Go ahead, throw the comments in there. Those that know me, I don't really truly care if it's a big block Chevy, Ford, Dodge, whatever because my preference and I'll put in everything I have are either Chrysler Hemi, Chrysler 440, or Cadillac 500. If you want a video about that, I have one as well. I have a 1991 Chevrolet long bed half ton. I shoehorned the Cadillac 500 in and it is a monster. It's not a show truck. It's not a race truck. It's a work truck. It's named Old Ugly. See that right there? That's the air compressor. And it complicates putting the supercharger on this thing, which is why I'm thinking turbos. But I really shouldn't be thinking turbos. Not at all. A friend of mine's very upset with me about that. That's the old carburetor feed line. I didn't necessarily have it drained when we first tested the system. It fired up. It shot fuel on him. He can be so sensitive sometimes. That is the Easy EFI throttle body injection unit with the carb replacement. It is wonderful. I have the same system on my Cadillac 500. It's technically 30 over, 507. According to their instructions, that engine is too big. It shouldn't be on it. 
not power wise but idle air idle air issues so i have it on and it runs fine there's a little bit of a hiccup but that's all good i'm running about 33 pounds of fuel pressure with the vacuum on now that it's warmed up the drama that happened before are the battery cables battery cables for the system that are now nicely run and tucked and secured go over to the battery connect here all proper terminals not proper lugs whatever i had them jammed into there before the last time i tested i forgot i didn't zip tie them down and they got sucked into the spinning wheel and blade of death there i actually found two pieces of ground wire about six feet away from the truck the positive wire it had gotten ripped out of the terminal and wrapped around the fan blade four or five times and it actually yanked right there it yanked the connector out of the bottom of the easy efi i was absolutely terrified that what i saw was the internals of the easy efi but miraculously enough a couple of wire nuts and some butt connectors and all the scrap wire i could find put back together it turned on and never knew anything happened Normally I'd say what happens in Alaska stays in Alaska, except I had the grand idea of now trying to put everything on YouTube. But anyway, with this conversion, this thing purrs like a kitten and it just, it is so much nicer. I don't even have to get in the truck to start it. The power steering bracket way down there was bent when we got it, shoved back. So we pulled the radiator out and this is by far the largest radiator I've ever seen. We hooked the cha uh, chain onto it, hooked it to a winch, anchored it to my Bobcat, and pulled it out. Because the way it was, there was too much disassembly involved to get it, or to get at it to do it right. So we did it, not necessarily right. The alternator is still out of alignment, but the belts don't fly off, so who am I going to argue with them? I think the only thing left to do now is try to set up for a test drive. Here we go. Alright, let's see how this works. Well, I should actually probably put the bed down too, huh? Alright, well, let's fire it up and see what happens. That's a good start. PTO's already in. <coughs> Bed's coming down. I wonder if I can get around my well without hitting it. Uh, guess we'll find out. That's a big, big, thick, strong cast iron pipe or black iron pipe. Should be fine. And bed's down. Ah! Still have air pressure. And we're moving. Oh, I don't have much brake pedal. That's all right. I don't have much to eat. Here we go. What could go wrong? Maybe I shouldn't say that yet. This might be a very bumpy and slow ride, but in all fairness, it is for me too. Let's not hit the well. Here's it. No, I cannot make the turn. Alright, here we go. Top of the hill. So this is going to be the full length of my driveway, you see.
third gear. Okay, test drive. Successful. Time to fix up the ignition and make sure it's trying to kill itself. I should probably go ahead and change the transmission too. Fortunately, I have one because, well, eBay. I think this is first. If anybody has a spare shift knob with the pattern for a Dana Spicer five speed industrial trans, I think it's a, oh boy. I want to say 56, 52, but that's probably wrong. Yeah, so now I'm trying to go down the hill in second gear and it kicks it out because it's bearings. Did we just coast down a neutral? Wouldn't be the first time. Can't find them, grind them! But as a rule of thumb, Anytime I use this truck, it kind of tries to kill me, so we're, we're, we're trying to prevent that. Oh, there it is, that's here. Hang on to your hats. brakes which means it makes the appropriate cool noises so I am popular with all the 10 year olds well 10 year old boys that like the sound of semis oh wow that's that's bumpy ready here it is the reason I bought the truck that that noise right there I don't know about you but I'm exhausted this thing is a workout to drive Well, that's it. Something I did actually kind of worked. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you didn't, I apologize. I'm still figuring this out. If you did, throw one of those thumbs up like things. Maybe even subscribe if you haven't already. There'll be more like this. Actually, no. Hopefully, they're a lot better. But there'll be more videos to come. They're going to be, unfortunately... Not weekly, not daily. I'll be doing good to do something monthly sometimes. 
I'll put stuff up when I can. Like I said, I don't live here yet. This is home. I was born and raised here, but I don't live here yet. I'm trying to come home. So the more time I have up here, the better. I can work on things, fix things, keep things moving. And to be honest, I feed off other people's energy. If you guys are enjoying it, leave comments, leave suggestions, leave ideas, what you'd like to see, what you'd like me to do. If it's within reason, eh, maybe not reason, but if it's within my capability, I'll give it a shot. I like having fun. If this channel is well received and people enjoy it, I'll feed off that. And frankly, I'm having a bunch of fun putting it together. So I'll leave you with that. Like, subscribe, share, spread the word. There's an idiot in a forest with bad ideas and he's having fun trying to make them work. Until next time.